For years, solid state batteries have just been cells, but now they're being integrated into vehicle level battery packs for the first time, promising super safe, fast charging and long range electric vehicles. To investigate this and cut through the hype, I went to Munich in Germany to get hands on with these battery packs. My first ever scientific publication was actually around the use of solid state batteries in vehicle level battery packs, so this was very exciting to me. These new developments mean solid state batteries are powering real vehicles, and production should soon ramp up. But what I found is that not all claims being made are what they seem. Some of this is marketing hype, but some is true innovation. I respect your time, so let's get straight into the technology. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. The long-standing joke is that solid-state batteries are always five years away, and this is partially due to research being a slow process, but also the unclear goal of what their arrival really means. The fact we now have companies driving around with solid-state batteries is a huge milestone, but as always, getting these cars to consumers is always going to be a slow process too. Instead of moving the goalposts, I want to reflect on the achievements that have been made in light of the new announcements. And there are three main companies that I want to cover. These are from Mercedes, Ducati, and Rimat, each of which claim to have a vehicle battery pack using solid state batteries that can drive a real world vehicle. The first question to ask here is what is meant by solid state batteries as the definition seems to get a little bit loose in the marketing world. I was always under the impression a solid state battery would use a solid electrolyte, which is the part separating the anode and cathode and it would likely be made of ceramic. Due to its strength, the solid electrolyte would allow a high energy lithium metal anode, providing a safe and high energy density battery. This is because the strong solid electrolyte stops spiky lithium dendrites from breaking through to the cathode and short circuiting the battery cell. These grow due to lithium building up unevenly on the anode during charging, a problem that's especially common with lithium metal anodes. What I just described is an all solid state battery, but there are many more flavors of solid state batteries and too many to cover in just this video. The main one, however, being a quasi solid state battery. You may assume that when a company claims they have a solid state battery, it would be an all solid state battery, but beware quasi solid state is much more common. A quasi solid state battery uses a solid electrolyte, but generally it's as a particle which is then mixed up with some extra gel or liquid to improve its conductivity. This is the case for both the Rimat and Mercedes battery packs. The cells used in them are quasi solid state battery cells. Specifically, the Rimat cells are made by a company called Prologium and the Mercedes ones from Factorial Energy, who were both at the conference I visited in Germany. In my view, if the key selling point of a solid state battery is that the solid electrolyte enables high energy anodes, then it doesn't really matter the exact composition of that solid electrolyte. For example, it being mixed with gel or liquid. In fact, the factorial cells used by Mercedes say that they already have a high energy density lithium metal anode inside them, but using a quasi solid state electrolyte instead of an all solid state one. With this battery pack, Mercedes are already driving around on the road covering over 1,205 kilometers on a single charge. The pack was said to improve range by 25% using the same space for the battery, which is a huge improvement as a lot of the total battery space is used by the cooling systems and other components that don't add to the energy storage. Therefore, the actual cells could be more like 50% more energy dense, which roughly aligns with the numbers they're giving us at about 375 watt hours per kilogram. However, the Prologium cells used by Rimat are slightly different. These also use a quasi solid state electrolyte, but they don't use the high energy density lithium metal anode. Instead, they use what is called a 100% silicon composite which sounds strange as I've heard this misquoted 
as 100% silicon at the conference I went to, but the fact it's a composite means there must be other materials involved, so that can't be true. I also have a slight problem with them calling it a lithium ceramic battery, because it's not using a lithium metal anode, and it's not using an all solid ceramic electrolyte, but hey, that's what the marketers will do. Either way, it is very energy dense, giving the cells a claimed 355 watt hours per kilogram, which isn't far off the lithium metal batteries used by Mercedes. The recharge time is also unbelievably fast, at around 6 minutes from 5 to 80%, though not many chargers would cope with that. But for Rimat, it might be less about putting energy in, and more about how quickly you can get it out. The problem with silicon anodes is that they expand during charging, which is why the quasi-solid state electrolyte is used, because it's stronger and can resist those stresses caused from the expansion. I have heard that some currently available commercial cells do use some silicon too, but nothing close to this quantity. Both cells used by Rimat and Mercedes are incredibly impressive. We literally have solid state technology enabling incredibly high energy density cells due to lithium and silicon anodes. These are being used in cars that are on the road right now, and sometimes I think that's lost in the debate when people say it's always five years away. The next big problem is of course mass manufacturing, but Rimat's partner Prologium already have a gigafactory in Taiwan producing cells, with another one being built in France. My view is that solid state batteries take many forms, and really the aim is to push past graphite anodes, with silicon and lithium metal being top candidates. There are currently cells that meet this criteria being mass produced and tested on roads in real cars. I think this is probably worth celebrating, and I don't think I would have believed it had someone told me when I published this paper nearly five years ago. Putting these solid state cells in actual vehicles is now giving engineers new and interesting challenges to work on. For example, how can cooling systems be designed to take advantage of the higher thermal conductivities these cells appear to have? That broadly covers Rimat and Mercedes, but what about the battery pack I saw from Ducati? Well, that was actually all part of the Volkswagen Group flexing their achievements in a partnership that also included PowerCo and QuantumScape, with a solid state motorcycle coming out on stage during a presentation, albeit at a very slow walking pace. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing, it's free and helps the channel a lot. The QuantumScape battery is the closest to what I've always imagined for solid state batteries. It has been covered a lot on YouTube over the years, but it essentially uses an all solid state ceramic separator with a lithium metal anode, which grows and disappears during charging and discharging. This means it's the hardest to get right, but also has the highest possible energy density, though current versions are actually very similar to the quasi-solid state cells we've just looked at. Either way, the cells have successfully been integrated into a vehicle battery pack, which I got to see up close and personal. I also held one of the cells, which was pretty cool after following their development for so long. The battery pack was only for a motorcycle, and I imagine that's because it's smaller and simpler, and also because it requires less cells, and it seems like making them and manufacturing them is currently a bit of a bottleneck from conversations I had with QuantumScape employees. This video is really about the emergence of solid state battery packs, but I will mention the bike uses the QSE5 battery cells, the specs of which can be seen in this infographic. They have mentioned that this is the cell they'll be pushing into scaled production, though this graphic indicates that there's a yet to be released larger format cell that will be their best offering. This will be needed if they want to offer better energy densities than the currently available quasi solid state competition. The pressure is also mounting because the battery giant CATL recently announced a prototype cell with 500 watt hours per kilogram, which is about 40% more energy dense than any of the batteries covered in this video. 
I always forget to mention some important information, so here are some rough specs of the Ducati bike based on what we know and some of my own calculations. I haven't seen these given anywhere else, so I'll lay out my calculations here too. Apparently there are 980 cells, each with 21.6 watt hours of capacity. This gives 21.1 kilowatt hours of total storage, with maybe 20 kilowatt hours being usable. Using the 0SFS as a reference, which gets a claimed 171 miles of range in the city and 116 miles of range on the highway from a 15 kilowatt hour pack, the Ducati would likely be looking at around 230 miles in the city and 155 on the highway. Honestly, I wish the best for all of these companies pushing the frontiers of science and engineering, especially with the threat of CATL overtaking them all at any point due to the massive research budget they have and experience. So what do you think? We have all solid state batteries powering motorcycles, even if it was very slowly on stage. And we have quasi solid state batteries with incredible energy densities going into mass production. I think solid state batteries are here. The problem is, liquid electrolyte cells are so good now. I think the market for the solid state batteries is getting quite small as passenger vehicles won't need them. Until they can be used for something like electric flight, I don't know if they'll be broadly adopted like we once thought they might be. Now designing and manufacturing breakthrough systems like this requires a lot of precise modeling for simulations and machining, which is why engineers use computer aided design software like the product from Onshape who made this video possible. If you are an engineer, tinkerer or part of a business looking for an incredible computer aided design solution, then you need to check out Onshape a professional grade CAD and product data management system designed to revolutionize how you design and manage your products. Imagine secure real-time collaboration, multiple people working on the same design at once, no more crashes, no lost data, and no need for an IT team. Onshape tracks every change automatically with infinite restore capabilities, and its branching and merging features, similar to Git, make merging complex designs effortless. Plus, it runs on any device, from computers to tablets, so you can work anywhere, anytime. For you viewers in the US, Onshape just launched Onshape Government, a version specifically tailored for companies needing regulatory compliance, like ITAR and EAR. And unlike traditional CAD software, Onshape is built entirely in the cloud, accessible directly from your browser, meaning no matter who you are, you can get set up in minutes. Sign up for Onshape today and get up to six months of the professional version for free at onshape.pro slash Xeroth.